Welcome folks, this is Corey Babka from MarksGroupLive.com here today talking about how do I set up and use the Outlook plugin for Zoho CRM. Okay, we're going to go over a few things today. Uh, however, after the video is over, feel free to email us at support at MarksGroupLive.com. Any questions on this subject or anything else? Also, be sure to rank this class and be able to rate the class to help out your fellow subscribers and other users of Zoho CRM. Okay, here's some main points of today. We're going to talk about how to set up and install the Outlook plugin, talk about the configuration settings and what those each mean, and we're also going to talk about adding and using the menu to actually go through some pitfalls of the product, what I've found, what I don't like, what I do like about the product. Okay, so let's go ahead and get to it. So, first things first, what we're going to talk about is we're going to go to the actual system and we're going to look at there. We're in our home screen and we're going to go to the setup. So when we go to the setup here, we actually want to go to the marketplace because we need to find this integration, specifically into Microsoft. Okay. I go into the Microsoft piece, and then here I have this whole idea of what I want to do. That we have Word and we have Outlook. Okay, for Outlook, we have to decide which version. You can see there's a limitation on which versions we have for Mac, specifically 2011, 2016. Okay, for Windows, we go back to 2010, and we also include 2013. Choose your version, 32 versus 64, and you can easily find that if I actually open up my Outlook for you. I'll actually go here so you can see it. If I go to my Outlook, in my Outlook and the help and and the help and about, what happens if I go into this and I look at my Office account? It will tell me if I say about Outlook, it will tell me what version it is, and mine is 32 bit. Okay. I go back to there. And so I would say 32 bit here, do this, click the download, and run it. Okay. Once I download and run it, it's a very quick install, not a big deal. You do want to make sure that you have Outlook closed when you're running and installing. And then once you open up, let me just kind of close some of these things up here. Once I open up your Zoho CRM or your Outlook again, you will find that there's a new tab called Zoho CRM. Okay. And what happens is when you first log into it, it will tell you you now logged into Zoho with Internet Explorer in Outlook. A little bit confusing. I know a lot of you are Firefox and Chrome users. What it does is it actually uses Internet Explorer as a part of Outlook. This is something built in more of a Microsoft thing. It's not really up to Zoho on this. So what happens is you get it this way and you're logged in. Okay. Now I personally don't love the window pane on the right. Okay, because what it's constantly asking me to do is add my email of where, where things were going, the inbox, as a lead or a contact. Okay, but if I look at things here and I've got my Vimeo, right, you can see there's my, my idea, right, it's saying it's doing the same thing. And if I look at my Corey or DMD, I'm not seeing the conversations that I should see. Okay, because it, something's a little bit off and I'm not sure why. Something I'm not loving. Okay, so what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to actually, I can even open this up, and you can see there's the email, not a lot going on there. Okay, what I want to show you though specifically is more if we close this out, I use, I like to use the Zoho CRM bar at the top. Okay, but before we get to that, let's go in here and let's look at the settings. So if I look at my settings, as you notice, there is contacts, tasks, and calendar, as well as the emails, which we're, of course, going to focus on. But this allows me to sync my contacts, okay? Contacts owned by me, all contacts. I have to choose my folder and find it in there before I start syncing, okay? Once I do that, I can check this box and sync the changes automatically. My tasks, same thing. Choose the calendar, choose the task item, and sync it. Same with the calendar. So if I choose my calendar here, I can sync different things. I can sync only certain categories if I want. If I put in a Zoho category, I can do that, and it would only sync those if I decide to flag those. Okay? Emails. This is the big one. Okay? So emails, as you notice, it's looking for my sent folder. Okay? My sent folder is it wants to know what the folder is that would be my sent folder for here I'm gonna go in I have a few email boxes here I'm gonna actually go here and say this is the sent folder and once I do that it would say add outgoing emails to Zoho CRM automatically which I could do right not only that I have other options 
to automatically do it. So if I just check this box here, okay, what's going to happen is if I send my father or mother an email, it's not going to go in because their link, their email is not inside Zoho. So for, it's not going to link. However, if I send it to Bill Jones at Books, 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 right, it's going to go in there because his email address is in there, right? So it actually does it this way. So search the recipients, email address and contacts, and associate the sent email with matching contacts, okay? If no contacts, right, we search the leads. That's fine too, and that's okay. And I recommend that you have these three checked. This is the one that I don't recommend that we always do. If, I, if no leads match, then create a new contact or a new lead and associate the email. That's going to create a load of leads that you may not want. Okay, and that's the thing there that you're going to want to kind of, you know, I don't like this one. I don't, I don't want to do this because I just, I get too many. I might send out way too many emails, people that I don't want to link. It depends on the user. And remember, this is user specific. So you might do it for customer service. You might do it for someone in administration. You wouldn't do it in the boss, you know, in the, the boss's configuration. Okay, save that and away we go. Now, how do we link this otherwise? Well, what I can do is I like to look at these emails and say, you know what, I need to add this email. Okay, and I can add the email. Please set additional mail settings, right, which I don't have, but it would be that conflict piece, right, where I could say boom, and then this is the add outgoing, so that's fine. This is the other one for add mail by itself, and if I do this, it's fine. And I say save. Now, if I click that add email, it's going to mock, it's going to say no matching records found. Fine. At this point, I could then search and find an email, and I even have the ability to add attachments. Okay. So if I search for the value here and say Corey, right, I've got two emails, and I can say you know what, I'm going to link that one and add the record. Let's do it to actually this one instead, though. Go there, we add it in, emails added, and away we go. Okay. Now, my pane shows up here again, but the thing is, is I'm not seeing that email. Like, that email is here, but it's not linking correctly. Okay. That's what I don't like about this. Like, there's, there seems to be something a little bit off with mine. I don't know what. Um, I may have to get with support and see why is it not finding it, because I think that this should be finding the actual person which is what it's supposed to do, like it does in my Gmail or even in my sales inbox. Other videos that we have on this out in the library that talk about the sales inbox, also talk about the Gmail integration, and you have it this way. However, for certain people that don't like to really add everything, I do prefer this right here for the add the email. Again, no matching records, so therefore I can search, or I can even add a case. Okay, This is where I disable or enable the side panel. But I can add a case right here if I wanted to, and I could add it to Eric, right? Do this, add, case added successfully, and now I could go back to Eric's record. Let's go find him. We're going to do a search for Eric. And if I do that, there's Eric right there, and now he's got one case right there, which is based on that email that just came in. A lot of different things going on, okay, a little bit, the body of the case is actually the description is the email, okay. I go back to Eric, and if I look here, I should also see in his emails, and it hasn't sunk up yet, there will be an email in here that, that I've seen that it takes sometimes a couple minutes to get in here, but you'll see that email in the system. If I look at one of my other contacts that I did earlier, when I did it, if I looked at Corey, you can see there's my emails. There's two, and there's a certain ones that I did there. I did a testing linkage where I sent it for my Outlook, and it went in here right away. Now I know it's from my Outlook based on the signature as being specific there. Okay, so it's from my personal to this record, so therefore it automatically got linked. You can link your sent and received both. I think that's important to know. Okay, gives you that flexibility from your sent folder as well as. Now, I didn't have it automatically. What I did was I just did a, you know, a search or an add an email, which you can do. But if I did have a um, the automatic email set up, if you're not using the IMAP configuration, again, we have another video on the IMAP configuration that you may want to also reference, trying to determine what's best for us as an organization, right? Do I use Outlook? 
do I use uh, you know do do I use the the IMAP integration? Do I use the BCC Dropbox? So there's a few different ways that you can actually look at your email integration. There's again there's a Gmail add-in, there's an Outlook add-in, there's the sales inbox within Zoho Serum itself. There's the BCC Dropbox that you can use to occasionally drop in certain emails. There's the IMAP integration that gives you everything based on your Gmail or maybe your Microsoft Outlook or Exchange or Office 365 mail server. There's a lot. What I just said is probably a little bit mind-blowing for some. That's okay. Um, we can help as well, you know, to kind of determine this. But I'm hoping that there's a few videos out there that we went through today. Kind of look at the pros and cons of each. Figure out what works best for your organization. Okay. Some takeaways from today. We've got... Uh, how to install the Outlook plugin. You go to the marketplace, go to do the download, the install based on what version of Outlook you have 32 bit, 64 bit, Mac, or Windows. Okay? You're going to set up your configurations, your settings. Do I do automatic linkage of my sent emails? When I click the add email button, what happens? Is it going to automatically match contacts and then leads? And then what happens if it doesn't find one? Do I then automatically create a lead? You can do that. You can also create a case, as we showed. Right? So using the menu, like I said, you can create a case, you can add an email, you can even search for emails specifically. Let's say an email comes from a vendor that is about a certain client. You don't want to link it necessarily to the vendor. What you may instead is want to link it to the client, but they're not on the email as a recipient or a sender. So the system's not going to be smart enough to know who do I link this email to. So what do you do? You click the manual add button, you would search for that particular client, link that email and now it's a permanent part of their history as well. Remember emails are important as history and when we talk about CRM 101 activities, events, tasks, at this point we're talking about emails as well as a critical piece of, um, of activity tracking. Okay, So hope that you enjoyed this video, got a little bit out of the Outlook plugin and what do I do with it. Um, if any questions on this topic, anything that we need to go into a little bit further, please email us at support at marksgrouplive.com. Um, check out some of the other videos in the library uh, for others. Any other suggestions, anything like that, please contact us. Don't hesitate to reach out. Support at marksgrouplive.com. Okay. Thanks for watching and uh, see you around the library.